Hi there Gemini, welcome back to Wild Letters Tarot. This is going to be your monthly intuitive reading for October. Gemini, let's see what's on the cards for you. Uh, we'll be starting with the uh, Sacred Power reading cards from Anna Stark. I'll be then drawing you a Work Your Light um, card from the Oracle deck here, getting you an overarching tarot card from the Moonchild Tarot, and we'll then get out your full tarot story with the Rider Waite clarified with the Star Child Tarot. So let's get started, uh, Gemini. See what overarching messages we have for the Gemini Collective for October. Gemini need to know that one. Change. Ooh. <laughs> it's jumping off the table. Whoa, can't even pick that up, Gemini. Change. Well, you know, is it going to be the small winds of change like the Page of Swords, you know, the rust, the rustling of initial progress? Is it going to be big wheel of fortune change? Is it going to be an eight of wands change or big cyclic change? Let's see what comes up. But it's saying here that you might find yourself going through change this month. And it's been a year of change, hasn't it, Gemini? I mean, think back to the beginning of 2020. Does that seem like another whole lifetime ago? I mean, so many of us have been through fundamental shifts and changes, and not only external changes, but internally as well. And it says there might still be more to come. And I really think that there is, um, you know, this year and into next year. But, you know, we just look at one day at a time, you know, navigating one change at a time is how we can really get through that. Let's see what else we have. that one unconditional love it's a beautiful message here um, Gemini I mean some of us get that from partners and families but we also get that from our spirit team past loved, one, loved ones ascended masters as well you know there is unconditional love all around and um, we are protected even if we you know feel it or not they are there and you can ask for their assistance as well Let's go to the work your light. Gemini. Hmm. Yes. The initiation. Rite of passage. Crossing the threshold. Change is coming, you know, going from one reality into another. I often think of this card like the fool's journey. You know, you can see that it's bright ahead. You can see, you know, through there that there is something great waiting, but you can't see the whole vista. So there's a bit of a blind leap of, leap of faith needed to, to cross the threshold. But we know we're heading into brighter times and we're coming out of the cave. We're coming out of that chamber and we're transforming and things are changing along with it. So interested to see where it all goes, Gemini. Let's get out your overarching tarot from the Moonchild deck. Dropping the cards there. Let's get this card with intention. Gemini. That one. Ooh, divine wisdom. Okay. Um, this is the first card time I've pulled this card. It is a new deck for me. This is an additional major arcana. So what this really means is that there could be some divine wisdom that is trying to come through to you. Like I was talking about the unconditional love from your spirit guides. And really, um, we receive the wisdom in a couple of different ways. One, we hold divine wisdom within us. And like the hermit, all we need to do is go within, which is slowing down, hearing the wisdom of our gut feelings, our dreams and visualizations, the, you know, the intuition of the heart. It speaks to us in those mediums. We can also ask that spirit team, you know, give me a sign. And a lot of people, you know, are waiting for this massive big, you know, neon blinking sign to give them the answer. But divine wisdom comes in subtle forms, guys. You know, it's the number synchronicities. It's the number plate we pull up behind at the lights that just is meaningful for us. It's the 
walking into the store and the song lyric that's playing answers a question that's on our heart so we have to be tuned in to receive the divine wisdom we have to be tuned into subtlety that's where the message of slowing down you know comes in it's very important for us okay so there's change there is an initiation there's crossing a threshold there is divine wisdom let's see what else there is gemini so Give these a shuffle out, the Rider Waits, and we'll pull some different aspects for you. Starting with the present energy, what has led you to the situation that's unfolding here today. Oh, Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment, I like the look of that. Let's get the Blocks, Challenges or Obstacles. Ace of Swords, Breakthrough. Let's get the Advice from Spirit or tarot i have got the king of wands the outcome near future energy the king of pentacles double kings and i have got the eight of swords at the bottom of the deck here gemini let's get the clarifiers for these some really bold energies here clarifying the nine of cups i have got the four of pentacles Clarifying the Ace of Swords with the King of Wands again, double hit of that. Hmm. Clarifying the King of Wands. Haha. Uh -huh. Awakening the energy of judgment. So here's the change. Clarifying the King of Pentacles. Let's take these two. I have got the seven and eight of pentacles. Okay. Interesting energy. Temperance is at the bottom of this deck. Just going to grab one more Gemini for the... For the Nine of Cups, the Four of Wands, wow, I mean they're very positive energies those ones. Okay Gemini, so we've got Double King of Wands here which is the energy of Leo, it's a very entrepreneurial energy. We've got the King of Pentacles which can also be very much a, a boss or an entrepreneurial energy. We've got a um, fair amount of uh, Pentacles here, so I'm feeling like this is more in the realm of our work, uh, our investments, um, you know, our achievement and success and that type of energy here. So I'm really feeling that there is some kind of breakthrough major shift to get to the next level. And maybe that is the initiation. You know, you're crossing the threshold into an unknown because you haven't been there before. And it's a step towards wish fulfillment. This is a milestone for you. It's a change, right? You know, and we're going to need though to use those skills of divine wisdom because by the time we kind of start getting into that, getting up to that next level, it's like it's not enough just to to operate from our intellect you know these guys here are kings and king energy because they are combining their earthly skills with their wisdom with their innate gifts as well and that's when we reach that that blue flame you know area where we burn the hottest because our skills and passions are overlapping so I really feel like you're stepping into the sense of power here. It's a real breakthrough. So in the present energy leading up to now, I've got the Nine of Cups, the Four of Wands, and the Four of Pentacles. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some of you may have already um, taken a path to success, or you might currently be in this at the moment. But, you know, for me, the Nine of Cups is the Wish Fulfillment card. But what comes before that is the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is somebody who's made the decision in a situation to basically cross the threshold and walk into a new situation to find the missing pieces, to find the Ninth Cup. Because the person in the Eight of Cups energy is in a situation where they've got a certain amount of satisfaction 
but there's not the full picture, there's not the full amount of cups there to really give them that sense of achievement, to make them feel emotionally fulfilled. And I feel that you are crossing the threshold, you're crossing the line and achieving a milestone towards wish fulfillment in the month of October, right? And it's already showing in your energy. The Nine of Cups is the energy of fulfillment and contentment that comes to the person who's worked for it, who's made it happen, who has crossed the threshold, right, into the unknown. And that can be a scary thing. It's somebody who has embraced change and all the inherent challenges that come together with it. You know, and you've had to, or will be, you know, facing the fears. Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles is that... Um, that need to, you know, sometimes when we get close to success, the first thing that comes up is a need to, to hold on, to hold on to the past. It's almost like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm worthy. You know, the Four of Pentacles can talk about that sort of sense of self-esteem. And, you know, it can be a, a need of contraction or holding on to the past because there's fear associated with it, right? But the person in the Four of Pentacles, their, their lesson is to really loosen the grip, to surrender, to let go, because it's that energy that, that leads us to our greatest successes. If we play small, we always, you know, do what we always did, get what we always got. So there's a real message to, to not play small here and to absolutely go for it and to believe in yourself. The Four of Pentacles transcend that energy and um, leave your comfort zone. That's what I'm really feeling here. The Four of Wands, a couple of different things. This is the milestone reach, right? You've, you're getting into that fulfillment stage or you're taking a fundamental step towards that, towards stability, towards a new foundation and towards your happy ever after, whatever that means for you, Gemini. There's an element of synchronicity when the Four of Wands appears in a reading because it is the 1111 card. So as I was mentioning when the oracles came out, Tune into the signs to receive that divine wisdom, right? You know, because there could be a message that comes through for you that is fundamental on this journey this month, Gemini. That's what I'm thinking. There's some kind of sense of divinity about this. The blocks, obstacles, or challenges. We've got the King of Wands and the Ace of Swords. Hmm. I mean, the King of Wands in this particular deck, the Star Child Tarot, looks up towards the new moon, right? And the new moon is all about, you know, um, manifesting. You know, we've just done the release of the full moon and now we're building again. You know, we're, we're manifesting. So there could be some blocks, obstacles or challenges around, you know, making something happen this month. Stepping into this leadership role, maybe. I think some of you might be getting some kind of promotion to leadership or supervisor in your workplace or going up a step in terms of um, your achievements in your personal life or stepping into some kind of entrepreneurial um, situation here. Because the King of Wands is a great entrepreneurial energy, but the King of Wands is also a great visionary it's about knowing what opportunities to pursue, you know, and then what opportunities to put your, your energy, your wand, your enthusiasm, your passion into in order to have them become successful. Full of pentacles at the end of the reading here. So one of your challenges might be in discerning, where do I put my energy this month? What opportunities do I put them into? Where do I manifest? Where do I create? Because when we're in this kind of zone of creation, sometimes we just want to do everything. But it's about knowing which are the opportunities that are going to pay you back, right? That's what I'm sensing here. And, you know, the Ace of Swords really is having that vision, that clarity, that breakthrough, you know, to, to start the new beginnings in the right place. And that's your sense of victory, right? Using, you know, your intellect, together with your inspired action to make things happen. It can be about making sure that you operate from a place of truth and honesty and integrity, having the key communications that you need to as well throughout the month. Now the advice from Spirit or Tarot, we have got the King of Wands with the energy of awakening, which is the judgment energy. So 
the judgment energy, guys, is about liberation. It's about releasing yourself from what has kept you small in order to liberate and rise above, right? So we've talked about that with the Four of Pentacles. And I'm bringing this card back in as well, the Oracle card, because in the Rider Waite version, that's these cards here, um, of the Awakening or Judgment Energy, it shows these people launching out of small black boxes, offering themselves to the divine. And for me, that's really about this kind of rising above, stepping into the unknown, the initiation, being vulnerable, being willing to step up. And in those black boxes, I always say it's the devil energy. It's everything that's kept us small, kept us in scarcity, kept us in fear, like the four of pentacles. And you're being asked to, to rise above that, to cross the threshold, to initiate into king order this month. And the king order is whether you're male or female is stepping into divine masculine energy, doing, making it happen, you know, holding firm boundaries, asserting your authority where you need to in healthy ways. You know, it's that kind of energy. It's boss energy. It's entrepreneur energy. Whether you're operating in the home or operating in the workplace, that's what we need to, to bring through. So the, the judgment energy is really saying, is there a final judgment this month that's going to play out? And I'm kind of feeling it's the judgment of um, moving up a step. And I think for some of you, it is into that kind of leadership position. It's a liberation, right? And it's interesting because the judgment energy comes before the world in the major arcana. And the world is the energy of big cyclic completion change where we started off your reading so it says that there's a whole new cycle coming i feel like whatever the step up is it's going to be a whole new um, chapter in life in your career i am feeling more the career energy i have to say guys so you know you've heard the wait the awakening you've heard the angel's trumpet and you are now taking the steps to to make this happen to step up to lead like the king of wands to build your empire and if we do all of the above, the success truly follows. King of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, so what this is really saying to me is that, you know, step up and lead. Do what you love. Operate in that blue flame area where the passions and skills overlie. You know, and then the money follows. The abundance follows. The, the resources follow, Right? The Eight of Pentacles says that, yes, there might be some hard work ahead. Of course, there is. If we are stepping up in our career, it's going to be more responsibility. There's going to be, you know, more things for us to do. There might be some training that we need to do, filling in the skill gaps, that kind of thing. That's very much what the Eight of Pentacles is about. It's about the worker card. But you are carving out a new direction, one that's really aligned for you here, Gemini. So... I think it's not going to feel so much like hard work. It's going to flow for you. But I'll tell you what will feel like hard work. If we slip back into the Eight of Swords mentality, which kind of links back to that Four of Pentacles, it's the fear, right? The fear of the mind. You know, when the swords stack up against us and we start to think, oh, I don't know if I can really do this, you know. Um, you know, I'm feeling a bit hard done by. It's a lot more work than I expected. You know, it's that kind of over-analytical mind. But we want to keep out of that because, you know, that's what really can, can limit us. And when we get up in the mind like that, it also starts closing down our intuition. So this person is bound around the third eye, heart, and gut. And that is a metaphor for when we get carried away in the thoughts, we can't hear the divine wisdom. And we're being told here this month that Divine wisdom is a key part of your success that's going to lift you up to this next level. So that's the reminder here is to not get trapped by the mind. Have mastery of the mind. Two number eights, you know, it's through mastering the mind, using that together with your, your wisdom and the other skills that we've talked about that allows you to, to be truly successful. Eight of pentacles. Yeah, because I think if we get caught up in the mind, that's when things will, will end up feeling like hard work 
in in the wrong direction um, other than the the eight of pentacles the seven really is about you know putting in a lot of work and effort and not really feeling happy with what you're getting back maybe because it has become a trapping so that's why we really want to keep that mind under control and that's what I'm seeing from the seven of pentacles there but if we keep everything under control and we operate from intuition and we step up and we use that king of wands energy to um, to to be the inspired action this is where we end up king of pentacles card of taurus this is somebody who knows to create how to create true success and true abundance in his or her life by focusing the energy on the pentacle it is really an energy of trust and commitment you know a milestone reach because you're committing to something you know you're really putting your trust um, in your skills and talents and I feel like it's taking you to the next level. Some of you might be dealing with a Leo as well. And um, you could have a, even a mentor that is either a Taurus or a Leo that's helping you reach this next level. And I'm really feeling that kind of, you know, going to the next stage in career. And because of that, I'm going to uh, just pull a couple of Angels of Abundance because I really feel like it's operating... In that area this month for you Gemini that one. release resentments about money this could be from the the four of Pentacles here yes the money system of the world can seem upsetting but holding resentments about finances just pushes your abundance away instead see money as a tool that you can use to better the world and this shift will help you attract and support golden opportunities actually this one, I'm going to take this one here that is face down oops quiet retreat it's time to disconnect from the outer world so that you can discern and process your true thoughts and feelings from the inner world the divine wisdom Create this quiet time for yourself and you'll have more clarity about what to do next. Well, that's pretty much where we started the reading, guys. So on that note, we will finish it there. Gemini, I do wish you all the best for October. It looks like true success is coming your way. You are stepping up, changes upon you, but it's very positive change. Stepping into the unknown potentially in terms of your um, successment and successment <laughs> achievements and success and in your work role. Gemini, it's been a pleasure. If you feel called to share, do leave me a comment. I read them all and try to respond to as many as I can. Helps me get to know you guys and connect your energies. And I will see you back here throughout the month for plenty more readings.